YouTube, once again, it's Kanar Vernon Stewart here for Vernon Speak Sports Auburn in the middle of SEC Media Day's coverage. Of course, we mostly talk about Auburn football on this channel, but man, this, the SEC Media Days are really cranking up in Hoover, Alabama, and we got some interesting stories uh, as we talk about the lineup today. Of course, uh, Barry Odom for Missouri was up, as well as Ed Orgeron was up as well. It Well, is, pro is currently, uh, LSU is currently addressing the media as we speak. But today I was a little intrigued by the Kelly Bryant uh, interview. Uh, Kelly Bryant, of course, entered the transfer portal uh, prior to Clemson's game against Syracuse last year. We remember, a lot of us remember Clemson versus Texas A&M, a very hard fought game between both squads. A lot of, if you watched that game, you saw that Texas A&M actually had a legitimate shot at pulling the quote unquote upset over Clemson down in College Station, Texas. Now, after that game, you started to see a slow decline in Kelly Bryant's playing time at Clemson to the point where you could kind of get the feel that Trevor Lawrence was being ushered in as quarterback, very highly touted quarterback. Uh, Kelly Bryant, a former five-star himself, you know, really garnished a lot of comparisons to Deshaun Watson, former Clemson quarterback. But the thing is, that's what happens when the whole comparison game starts. Kelly Bryant was, you know, didn't live up to the bill as far as being a, uh, you know, a uh, Deshaun Watson. You know, succeeding. Uh, Deshaun Watson in the same manner in which Deshaun Watson played while he was there. Auburn has actually, you know, you talk about Auburn University, Auburn has actually experienced the same thing. Never being able to duplicate Cam Newton. Never being able to duplicate Nick Marshall. You got to let these players be who they are. I'm not saying that Clemson did this, but these comparisons winds up, you know, getting these players in situations that, you know, hey, I'm not like this player. Even Joey Gatewood at Auburn said, hey, I'm not like Cam um, Newton. You know, so let, let's cool down with the comparisons. Now, back to Kelly Bryant. After it was announced that Trevor Lawrence would be the starting quarterback for Clemson, true freshman, uh, taking over for a guy who, uh, Kelly Bryant, who actually led Clemson to a college football playoffs. Uh, as we talk about, the Auburn Tigers had a really, really back-and-forth game, defensive battle with Auburn. In Death Valley in 2017, Clemson subsequently winning that game on their way to the college football playoff, uh, being defensively dominated by Alabama in that first round. So here we are now. Kelly Bryant enters the transfer portal and strangely enough, in the Syracuse game, it appeared that Trevor Lawrence might have been injured in that game. So it was like, man, what irony. Your starting quarterback, your former starting quarterback enters the transfer portal, and now your new quarterback is hurt. But luckily, uh, Trevor Lawrence bounced back from the injury quickly uh, to lead, Syr uh, uh, lead Clemson to a very, very hard-fought win over Syracuse, 27-23. Uh, to 23. It was actually, you know, in question as to whether the Trevor Lawrence could pull that game off but subsequently did. We talk about the recruiting process for Kelly Bryant during his uh, entrance into the transfer portal. A couple of team names came about. You're talking Auburn, Arkansas, and Missouri are the ones that I remember the most. Kelly Bryant talked about in his interview that Missouri was the first team to contact him. Um, he said he, he went to visit uh, really fell in love with the situation up there and, um, you know, really, really felt comfortable uh, with the staff and where, you know, Missouri was headed. He even talked about the offensive coordinator and how he was impressed with the way that Derek Dooley helped to transfer Drew Locke into a second round quarterback in the NFL. Uh, he felt like in his recruitment, that he had to get it right. 
And he felt that based on the what he saw out of Derek Doolin, the conversations and how he felt like Missouri would put him in the best positions uh, to be successful and transition his game to the next level, he decides to go with Missouri. Derek Dooley actually coming from the Dallas Cowboys where he had coached uh, wide receivers for about five years. Now, one thing about Derek Dooley is he actually has some uh, SEC experience, a former quarter, I mean, not quarterback, but a former coach at Tennessee, making it to one bowl game. Wasn't like, you know, wasn't successful at all, 15 and 21 between 2010 and 2012. But after leaving the Dallas Cowboys, he, he comes to Missouri uh, to make an impact. Obviously had a huge impact on Drew Locke, who is now uh, employed by the NFL. And, you know, Kelly Bryant felt like he could get that same type of opportunity with Missouri to where they would actually play to his skill set and give him a opportunity to be successful at yet another power five school because the question was even asked hey you know how would you transition from an ACC you know ACC competition uh, to SEC competition because you know there's always that comparison of conferences you know hey the SEC is better than the ACC they could you know they, they feel, you know the SEC fan base Feels that way that the SEC plays at a much higher level. But hey, you got an ACC national championship that basically thrashed the, you know, royalty of SEC in the University of Alabama. So Kelly Bryant, a former Clemson Tiger, was accustomed to playing against SEC schools. Actually faced uh, Auburn and Alabama in that uh, 2017 college football playoff campaign. So, and he answered the question, hey, it's, it's, it's not going to be anything different. You know, I take it one game at a time. I have played this game before. He didn't say it like that. But at the same time, he, you could tell he has full confidence because he's been there before. That's one of the most, uh, you know, marketable qualities of Kelly Bryant at this point is he's been there. He's played at a high level. He just got beat by a very, very good true freshman in Trevor Lawrence that gave you know, Missouri, a better opportunity to be successful than ultimately they may have have been with uh, Kelly Bryant. And that was that that was the only scenario. He even talked about his uh, recruitment with Auburn. He mentioned the fact that, you know, Auburn was one of the schools that he considered out of high school. Uh, he said he really enjoyed his visit at Auburn. Uh, but he just, you know, he, he I think he had pretty much made his decision long term when visiting Missouri the first time, because I think Missouri get, gives Kelly Bryant the best opportunity long term for what he's trying to accomplish to be successful. We even talked a little bit about the postseason ban. Now, all of us can only imagine what that had to feel like. OK, you've transferred to this particular school only to find out once you get there that they're in a little bit of trouble. He said the coaches brought everyone in and said, hey, you know, if you really don't, you know, if you want to go somewhere else. Um, We would, you know, more than understand, considering the sanctions that are going on, you're talking a postseason ban. Right. And then they did mention, hey, we're going to do all we can to get the sanctions lifted to where we uh, can compete in postseason play. But as of now, basically, this is what it is. Kelly Bryant said, man, I had no intent of leaving Missouri. I didn't want to get back into the transfer portal. I didn't want to go through that process after I've made all these uh, relationships with the coaching staff. So he made it clear early on that this was his school. He was here to st- here to stay and was going to make the most of his opportunity. And I think that was a pretty good move because, I mean, if you really look at it, Mizzou- chances are not to downgrade Missouri on any level. But just given the totality of the circumstance, chances are, you know, they probably weren't going to go, weren't, weren't going to win the SEC championship anyway. Now, we look back to Auburn back in 1993, postseason ban goes undefeated. So that, I mean, it can't happen, and it has happened, but the probability of it happening is not really all that good. So postseason ban, Kelly Bryant declares his loyalty, and he's still there, participated in spring practice, looking forward to a very, very entertaining year uh, for Kelly Bryant, uh, you know, to bring 
to continue Missouri's quest uh, of relevancy in the SEC East. Really enjoyed listening to this young man talk here in the SEC Media Days. He talked about how supportive his parents were in the process. You know, being a mama's boy, didn't want to be 12 hours away from home, but had to make that critical decision to take his career to the next level. Again, my name is Kennard Vernon Stewart, uh, talking SEC Media Days today. Here on Vernon Speak Sports Auburn, where it's always great to be an Auburn Tiger, War Eagle.